What's up, Calc Gang? Welcome back to some mechanics. So we got this problem here. Uh, we got these two pipes. One of the pipes has twice as much area as the other pipe, and we're applying this force P to it. Now our goal is to find the reactions at point B and D. There's not really any numbers in this problem, so I'm just kind of making sure we know how to do this. So let's get started. So to start, we want to draw a force body diagram, and with our reactions, of course. So we have P is pulling to the right, and so we're going to have some support reactions. So just in the X direction, we know they have B of X. And we have D of X, right? And they're going to push away from P to counterbalance that. So if we do some of the forces in the X, we know it's equal to zero. That's going to be equal to P minus B minus D. So we're going to get that P is equal to B plus D, right? Makes sense. Okay, so this is cool and all, but we have two unknowns, B and D. We want to know what B and D are separately from each other. In order to do that, we're going to need to do our displacement. So, zero, right, our configuration says that B and D have to stay in the same place. We can't expand or contract because the wall is fixed. So we know that it's equal to the displacements, right? So displacement BC, whatever that is, if you subtract it from the displacement of CD, it has to be equal to zero. That's just what our configuration is. So this is our equation. Now we need to expand this. So we know that the delta is equal to PL over AE. And so this is for BC minus PL over AE for CD. So now let's try to cancel out everything we know. So how about E? So E and E, we can divide that, or we can divide it from both sides, and those are the same, so they're going to cancel. And then length, length is the same, they're both one half length. Those are going to cancel, so we're going to get zero is equal to P BC over area BC minus P uh, CD over area CD. So now we have this thing here. This is going to be pretty useful. We can plug that in. But what we really are interested in is these forces here. And these forces are going to be a little bit tricky to find, but it's just about taking cuts and doing normal. So let's go ahead and just figure that out right now. So let's take our cuts, right? So we're going to take two cuts. Our first cut's going to be here, and our second cut's going to be here. Our goal is to find the normal force in both of these figures. So let's take our first cut. All right, we're cutting there. So we know it from our first body diagram. Now we have B of X is pointing this way. So this is B of X. That means that here, this is gonna be normal, right? Normal, but this is gonna be equal to B of X as well because we need our sum of the forces to be equal to zero. If you're not drawing through all that, you can pretty well see that B of X is gonna be equal to that normal there. So that's what's gonna be in for B here, B of X. So then let's take another cut. So now we have, you know, this is point B, so this is also point B. Then we're gonna go up and we're gonna go to point C and we're gonna take our cut somewhere after there. So now let's look at our forces. So we have B of X, but P pushes this way. So let's just assume our normal is that way. What's it gonna be equal to? Well, it's gonna be B of X pushing this way minus P pushing this way. You can do some of the forces in the X to see that. Let's add the sum of the forces in the X. We know it's equal to zero, so it's gonna be minus B of X plus P plus normal. And you get that normal is equal to P minus B of X, or B of X minus P. So that's how I got that. Cool, so that's what's gonna be plugged in for P here. And let's just go ahead and do that. So we said normal of BC is just B of X, and it's expanding, so we can just say B. Uh, and then area, area of BC is just equal to A, right? So then we can subtract it from CD. So the force at CD is this B of X minus P. And then over that, area CD is equal to 2A. So now it's just about simplifying this equation. Let's bring out, uh, let's see, we can divide by area, right? So then we're just going to get B minus B over 2. Okay, so really quick, uh, I'd like to clarify uh, the things I did here. So when I was going through this, I put this negative sign here, just kind of out of assumption right, that um, it's a negative, right, uh, basically because we know that CD is going to have to compress if BC is expanding. So this negative sign made sense up to this point, but at this point I already factored for that negative sign when I did the B of X minus P. 
So at this point, this is basically a positive sign. I mean, I guess at any point here, these could be all positive signs. Just about how you're doing the math, right? But make sure it's consistent, otherwise you're gonna end up with a non-logical answer. So basically, now that we have this positive sign, it's gonna be b of x over two minus p over two. So if you do the math on this, you're gonna get that b is equal to three times p, or one third of p. One third of p. And that's one answer right there, right? So very cool how we figured that out. So now if we want to find d, we're just going to take that equation that we wrote way earlier, some of the forces in the x, and if you plug in b as a third of p, uh, then you're going to get that d is equal to two thirds of p. Nice, so those are two uh, solutions. Pretty cool, right, how this question works? I'm really liking this unit, it's a lot of fun. I hope you guys like it too. Uh, good luck on your homeworks. Uh, if you have any questions, ask in the comments, or uh, check out my other videos for more videos, and uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.